this is Niagara Street. And this is 616 Niagara Street. A mixed use development with some urban apartments, a cafe, and a shared workspace. Most importantly, 616 is also home to my office, where I brainstorm and edit Explore Niagara's videos. Now, like any urban revitalization project, 616 is kinda quirky. It has stairs to nowhere, doorways that were second-guessed at some point, old dog food advertisements, and an entire section where they turned the alley between the two main buildings into an atrium. But quite possibly, the most surreal part of the building is the 14-foot colonial salesman offering 10-cent packages of oatmeal. Which begs the question, what's with the Quaker man? Luckily for me, someone had already gone and done the research. This guy. The man who also was responsible for this being a shared workspace in the first place. Alright, my name's Patrick Whalen, and for six years I was the director of the Niagara Global Tourism Institute. And one of our projects was uh, to open a co-working incubator. We call it Trek, and we're in it right now. This is the building we're in. Okay, well, that explains why I'm here editing videos on nothing but Americanos and sheer willpower. But it doesn't quite explain why there is an enormous William Penn wannabe staring down at me, reminding me that I didn't have breakfast this morning. Well, it's an interesting story. Uh, the building that the mural is painted on was the first building built on the site. It was built in, I believe, 1909. It was the first supermarket in Niagara Falls. It was an A&P supermarket. And apparently business was good and they decided to expand and they built the building we're sitting in right now. And when they did, they covered up the Quaker Oats ad, which by the way is three stories tall. It extends into the second and third apartments. And it was covered up for literally 110 years. And in 2018-19, uh, we started this project and we started to demo the interior walls. We took down a wall that was here uh, an interior wall and we discovered the Quaker Oats mural and then subsequently found it on the second and third floor as well. Down in the corner here it says you see it says Thomas Cusick Company Buffalo and that was a big sign painting company around uh, the turn of the century and um, Buffalo threw us off because the Thomas Cusick Company was headquartered in Chicago. They had kind of a secondary headquarters on Fifth Avenue in New York because they were in the advertising business. But upon further investigation, we find that Thomas Cusick was an interesting story on his own because <laughs> Thomas Cusick came to America as a three-year-old. His parents both passed away. When Thomas was 17, just 17 years old, he realized he had a skill he could paint. And he had an idea. He could paint ads on the sides of buildings. And he started the Thomas Cusa Company at 17 years old. Cool. And he basically is credited with inventing the outdoor advertising business. And it grew to have 100 offices, pretty much an office in every major city in America, including one in Buffalo. And that's clearly the office that painted this. It was certainly not painted by Thomas Cusick because by 1909, uh, 1910, that area, era, uh, his company was quite large. Quite large indeed. By the time he sold his business in 1924, Thomas Cusack had over $26 million in assets alone, plus an annual gross of $23 million. It was said he had over 100,000 separate leases, controlling 40 million square feet of wall surface and over 1,800,000 square feet of billboards in this fine country. So in this case, he painted the Quaker Oats ad and rented it to the Quaker Oats company. Because the murals were painted on the outsides of buildings, they weathered and they're all gone. So the only one that really remains, it not in a faded, almost unrecognizable state, is this one. And, you know, this is the story of an entrepreneur, and at the time, this building was a building dedicated to entrepreneurs. So it was just a fitting story for, uh, for us and <clears throat> for what we're doing here. Unfortunately, <clears throat> um, a big yellow square had been painted over it, over part of it, and it turns out 
because of the historic tax credits used to finance this project, we weren't allowed to touch the wall. So our landlord, uh, Tia Montante, the president of Tia Montante Development, his name is Chris Campos, and he had the idea to paint what's missing on canvas and hang the canvas an inch away from the wall. So I started to look for artists and I really had a difficult time finding artists. Literally all of them that I interviewed and showed this to, they wanted to, to create, recreate the modern version of the Quaker Oats Man. They didn't want to put it back the way it was. We wanted to complete the, the missing piece. We didn't want some modern version of it. And I don't know what they meant by modern version. Would you somehow change the, the face and the hat and all that kind of stuff? So. So basically, I'd give it up, and uh, <clears throat> we weren't open yet, and I was working on the other end of the building, and I heard a knock at the window, <laughs> and it was David Jones, and I, he was yelling at me through the they window. He denied me three or four times, every time I come here, he asked me, do they need any artwork? He kept slamming the door in my face. I said, you know what, I'm not no quitter. I came out one late, he was in there on his laptop. He was like, it was late, it was getting nighttime, right? It was wintertime, I don't know. And it was pouring down rain. I said, he probably not even gonna ask, he's not even gonna turn around, probably think I'm a bum. I kept knocking on the glass, and he looked, he kept saying. <laughs> and I, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. I said, I go said, down to the door. Yeah, right, right, go ahead, I let him finish. He came down to the door and he said, I'm a painter, what do you need painted? <laughs> and I said, our walls are all painted, but they're painting the walls upstairs. Go mm -hmm. see the guys upstairs. He says, well, I'm not a painter, I'm an artist. <laughs> I said, you're an artist, oh, what kind of art, art do you do? And he whipped out his phone and he started showing me portraits, out of mostly portraits. Yeah. But he showed me a picture of down the street at 6th Street, he shows his talent. I'm just thankful that I'm here because I wasn't going to come to Niagara Falls. Unfortunately, David isn't joking. His first job in Niagara Falls was for a small store next to a coffee shop, which he had to paint in the middle of the night. It wasn't the warmest welcome. I was doing a sign on the ladder, and the lady that I was doing it for, she thought somebody was going to steal a coal with it. She had no lights with it. I was operating off my cell phone. Like, I said, when I get back to Buffalo, I'm not coming back to Niagara Falls. <laughs> and just as I said that in my mind, there's a long-time businessman here in Buffalo, a friend of Patrick. He had this white hair, he was coming out with a cup of coffee. He, he said, you're not from here. I said, no, I'm not coming back. He, <laughs> he took out a business card, but I'm going to say this. I didn't even turn around. I said, okay, have a nice day. I just kept painting. I said, I ain't coming back this time. And sometimes God puts you in a place for a reason, like you got to go back. And so David ended up making his way back to Niagara Falls, specifically 6th Street, where this local business owner was looking for someone to revive the front of his building. Um, he said, you think you can bring life to my building? I said, I can do whatever you want. And as I was doing and sketching, he went to put some money in here, you deposit, please come back. I said, yeah. He had painted the plywood windows, the plywood, the windows were covered with plywood, and mm -hmm. David had painted the windows to look like windows. Yeah. He painted the plywood to look like windows, and mm -hmm. behind the windows you could see furniture. Well, it was, it was furniture that he painted, on the, <laughs> so I knew he could do this. Mm -hmm. And I brought him in here, and I said, could you do this? And he said, oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, the rest is history. Uh, he gave me that picture to do the sketch. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah that was yeah, a, the that qualifying was the question idea. he asked me is, <laughs> do you know what the missing piece looks like? And I did. And uh, he said, do you have any paper? We didn't. <laughs> we hadn't moved in yet. We, we found, found, we found four together. pieces of paper. <laughs> and as you can see on the back here, we found some labels. And he put the four pieces of paper together with the labels, sticky labels. <laughs> and someone else came to see me and I left. And I came back literally 10 minutes later and he gave me this sketch, um, which is what he ended up using for his model. I mean, it was, it was shocking to me that someone could do that, stretch, that sketch in 10 minutes from that picture. Um, so. He basically said, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it, it was amazing. He had me walk back here, and as we were walking through it, I seen that place. I'm like, oh, my God, that's, that's the original picture from early 1900. I know it, because I'm a billboard painter. They call me a master. I'm not just bragging anything. I love what I do. And I've been around. I've seen some guys in Syracuse, some old timers, been in there since 1930s and 40s, do gold leaf and billboards. And I always pay attention. 
I always listen to my elders because you know you're never too old to learn. I've learned something about mural, not much, but something about mural painters, and we have a mural on the, that we had painted on the other on the other side of the building on a wall, and that painter uh, drew a sketch like David did, and then she projected the sketch on the wall, and then colored and filled in the blanks. David, no. Uh, he did this freehand. Uh, I he just because we stacked up tables here, stood on the tables. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Mixed, mixed all the paint. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Stood oh, yeah. on the tables and painted this thing freehand. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, just, just, a, he's just, he's got a gift. He's got a. God gave him a gift. He's a talented guy. I don't take no credit. It's all the guys, okay? I used to go to work when I was young, and I would stay till three o'clock in the morning to make sure I got their brush just right, whatever. I mean, I'm a master. I love what I do. When I started out painting, I'm from Chicago, South Side. You know, I grew up around the gangs and all that. I would stay home and do murals, and I was trying to do pictures, tracing, you know, like they trace with billboard. I never, and I didn't like that then, but I was trying my mother to put it away. So you gonna be an artist, you, you learn how to draw, you're not gonna be no fake artist. So you made me put away the, the newspaper and trying to trace Casper and Batman, and that's what I've been doing from now on. So. so how do Patrick and David feel about their names forever being tied to the history of this Quaker Man mural? Ah, oh, it feels great. Feels great. Feels I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> Things fade. People forget. Oh, they're going to never forget this. I don't care. It'll always be here, but I don't know if they'll associate my name with it. His name is on it. This company name, at least. There you go. New York. That's me. That's my name right there, 990 Signed by New York, that's me. Hey, I can go on and on. I just, I'm gonna let you go ahead. I'm no, sorry. That's our I story, we're sticking to it. <laughs> so that's the mystery behind the Quaker Man. It's a weird story of early 20th century advertising, 21st century revitalization, and a dash of timeless artistry. To be honest, I think Pat's wrong. Pretty sure him and David will be part of the story for as long as people here at 616 look at it. At least I know I think of them whenever I look up. <laughs>